This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now in Big Day outside of Oslo. And uh, today we're going to look at some more electric boats. But you see, um, in the past I've shown you guys some... Uh, well, here you can see, by the way, a fossil engine. You can hear it. Yeah, that's uh, no need to explain why they are noisy. But you see, in the past I showed you Candela, which is a hydrofoiling electric boat. And I was again the cruiser. But you see, those are like, uh, the cruiser is uh, just, you can't buy it, you just have to rent it. And then uh, Candela is really expensive, only for millionaires. But here I'm going to show you a solution. This is Impulse Power. They just make drivetrain, which is outboard motor and battery. And that's it, and you can expand it. Uh, you can have more batteries, or you can, I uh, guess, have more uh, powerful motors. And then it's supposed to be way more affordable, and you can just mount it on anything because it's just an output motor. So um, they have actually similar pod design as the uh, Candela. Uh, maybe not that high tech as them, but at least it's something uh, that should be also pretty cool. So I can also show you that uh, this, I mean, I'm, I'm not a boat guy, but see, we just have a marina here. And very commonly at the marina, you have blue plugs. Oh yeah, oh, I guess they are, they, are they locked or something? No, they're not locked. Okay, so, but you see the boats, they have uh, electricity for whatever is inside there. And that means that uh, there's already infrastructure so you can charge boats while they are docked here. So this is uh, an old sail, well, it's not that old, but it's a sailboat that have put on electric uh, motor in. So you're gonna check it out. So here we have the guys from Impulse Power. That's correct. And um, okay, can you introduce uh, the? Yeah. yeah. So Impulse Power, we are a Norwegian company that's uh, developing and selling electric outboard motors and batteries, and some auxiliary equipment that we will show you afterwards. So and are you the owner or a co-founder? Or yeah. Well, we, me and my partner Arne here has. Uh, yeah, there's no guy there. Yeah. <laughs> He's founded this company some, some years ago. We are um, basically sailors and uh, we, we wanted to, you know, sailing is a environmental thing. You want to be part of the ocean and uh, be green. Um, so uh, we wanted to replace our uh, fossil outboard motor that you, you kind of need a uh, motor to get out of port uh, and so on. And we wanted that to be electric and environmental. And we wanted something that's uh, reliable uh, and that's easy to handle. Uh, and, and quiet basically so so that was, was the driver for this uh, company setup okay so before we start we have to look at this uh, motor here so uh, first the the top part there uh, yeah yeah this one what does that contain so obviously you have the control here you can have a steering steering wheel uh, or a tiller uh, like this um, so uh, that you handle the motor of course and uh, inside here there is a controller uh, that takes the DC power from the battery and splits it and send it down to the to the motor, uh, which is further down in the assembly. So the motor is also DC. The motor is DC. Uh, down here, basically, this is a three kilowatt motor. We also have a six and a half and an eleven and a half, and you will see the difference will basically be a little bit longer uh, distance here. Otherwise, the whole thing will look the same. And a little bit more weight. Um, this is a fully closed motor, so this is patented by by, by us and the manufacturer that we're working with. Um, so that means it has very long life. Uh, we're shooting for thousands of hours. Uh. Yeah, so just like the Candela, the Lisa C8, so there is just electrical connection down there, right? Yep, three cables going down here. Um, you can actually also adjust the height on this one. Um, so uh, that, that works, and then the controller here, I said, and then the motor down, down here. There. So the so motor the, under sea. So there's, oh yeah, so it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> my viewers are, oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, unlike, uh, for example, the fossil engine over there, then is that a physical link from the top part to yeah. the bottom? It's a shaft and gears, so, so the, uh, you know, the uh, combustion part or the uh, pistons and everything, everything is sitting on the top. And then there is a shaft going down and a gear to drive the propeller there. Which introduces uh, losses, friction, and also noise, yeah. and ad additional noise. Noise and maintenance. And maintenance, yes, because that's also the problem. I can, I can just zoom in and show you that. 
at the propeller part there on the bottom, uh, you have to have um, like a seal and lubricant so to prevent the wa uh, salt water from entering it, which means you have to service it. Otherwise, you will have a kaput uh, system. Mm -hmm. But here, I can zoom in and show you that this part here, so wait, is it possible to rotate the, the, the motor? Yeah. You see, okay. You see, it rotates. But um, at first, I didn't understand what was the problem here because the motor is in here and you have to transfer motion over to the propeller Correct. and then, and then uh, so you need a shaft and you need to make sure that uh, the, it's watertight we didn't talk about this when we look at candela i don't know how they've solved this but how did you guys solve this i i think candela also done some 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 very smart thing there uh, because they, they also talk about very long life uh, we uh, have a magnetic transmission so the motor is completely closed. The whole motor housing is completely closed. There is no exit or anything. It's just a magnetic transmission, which is patented. So uh, we have run this, been running this in a test jig uh, for thousands of hours. Uh, and so maintenance on this motor should be fresh water uh, and clean. And then, uh, so uh, where are the magnets roughly? Uh, roughly uh, in here, uh, in here basically. So the motor sits here and then there is a magnet over here, and then there is a shaft here, uh, which uh, kind of runs uh, and it's connected to, to the propeller. <laughs> you know, the, when, I, when I heard about this, I was thinking, ah, I have a, an Oral-B uh, electric toothbrush, and it also has a magnetic uh, transmission, so you can wash the toothbrush. And I think the same principle here. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I, I can't wait to, to listen how quiet this one is then since it's underwater. Very, very quiet. So uh, you, we can uh, film a little bit. Well, we won't hear it because of the, uh, the birds <laughs> the here. Seagulls, yeah. <laughs> but but we'll, yeah, we'll just go out very slowly and uh, it will be completely quiet. And I, I think my experience, and this is a big change, you know, when you sail, one of the big things is, oh, you turn off the fossil engine. It's like, oh, quiet. It's like sailing with a motor. Um, so uh, you will hear more noise from the hull than you will hear from the actual motor. Hmm. Okay, well, let's go. Cool. Wow. So now, now we are uh, uh, we are backing out yep. the boat. Yeah. Backing out of the port here. And you can see that. Oh, that, that is silent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Uh, have you guys watched the video with Cruiser? Cruiser, yeah. Cruiser, they have it uh, in Austria. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that one was noisier. Yeah. Maybe because it was a different design. Probably different design. Uh, typically, uh, this this design is an innovation. So, so this is very quiet. Uh, previous generations and other manufacturers, we, there is some noise. There is some mechanical noise. There is very little noise here. Wow. Obviously, when we throttle harder, there will be a little bit more noise. But also, then you have more noise from water passing through the hull. So, but I wonder. The, the, I mean, there are other uh, electric outboards out there. But they are probably based on the fossil principle, right? That you have the motor here and then you have a shaft. Some, some are that, some has it uh, under, uh, under, under the water line, but uh, this is very quiet. Yeah, indeed. So you have to, oh yeah, this, you just want to... I use this to, I, I could do like that as well. Okay. But typically I just lock it here and, and uh, I will turn now. Is yes. it, the, I'll have to tell you guys that I'm, I'm a land crab and I, I never really f thought about how sailboats are supposed to enter and exit the marina. But uh, of course, the, 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 you can see the sailboats over there. Every sailboat, or at least most of them, they have uh, an outboard. But what about those ones that doesn't have outboards? How do they do it? They have an inboard. Ah, yeah, it's of course. Bigger, bigger so they actually have to have a, a fossil engine yeah. Yeah. somewhere. But we, in the future, we would like actually to uh, think about an uh, inboard electric, uh, basically the same principle, you know. And a sailboat needs weight in the in the bottom, so a battery isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a ballast, or they yeah, call. yeah, basically. This is, wow, this is magic. I, okay, so I, I tried those other boats in the past, and none of them were that silent. As this one. Okay, okay, I assume Candela will also be this, this quiet, but 
this is magic. <laughs> we are moving and it is so silent. Uh, I guess if you, once you realize that this is the way it should be, not that, uh, because those, those fossil engines are, are noisy. And I think another thing, well, okay, we can, we can demonstrate later. I think we go, we're also going to raise a sail, right? We can raise a sail. Mm. Uh, we're going to show you some other stuff, but now this is the, just the one scenario where you, you leave the, the, is it called marina or was it? Yeah, the port or the marina. Okay, port or marina. And I can, by the way, show you that uh, here, that's, that's the land. And then we were actually on a small island. And then there is a, an electric boat, a ferry rather, passenger ferry. Just, just has to draw, uh, sail that short distance to there. But it's also electric. <laughs> but even that one, I noticed, had some kind of noise. I think it was. Uh, do you guys know? You guys know that boat, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, a little vibration or something. Yeah. But it has some kind of noise in the drive shaft or something. Mm. But this one is just. It's amazing how quiet it is. Now, how much power are we using now? Uh, we can take up the app uh, and see the power. Um, not a lot, uh, and this is. Uh, one thing to consider when you drive electric, um, this is a displacement hole. So that basically means that you, you go through water, you don't go on top of water. Um, and you cannot go faster than the length of the boat. And there's a formula for that. So, so this boat can go in 5.9 knots, uh, 10 kilometers per hour-ish. Uh, and I can put up these put the motor from this cruise ship over there in, inside this boat, <laughs> in theory, and it won't go any faster. So um, for us, it, it's about finding the right power versus speed, finding that balance. So typically, I think I have 500 watts, 300 watts of power now, not a lot. I can go up. And this is, uh, how powerful is this one again? This, this is three kilowatts. Oh, this is three kilowatts. Yeah. So, but so this is X05. Oh, oh, it, 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 this is impulse five. So, so this is a three kilowatt, 10, uh, five-ish horsepower equivalent. Oh, yeah, uh, that's the X5, yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, we're running at a kilowatt now. This is one kilowatt. And I'm running, the speed is, uh, if you look at the uh, for GPS. No? We look here, we have, we have a GPS here. So we're now, uh, what, what, is this the knots? This is knots. So we are running at 3.6 knots. And now when we go higher speed, we hear a little bit of uh, something, but it's still, it, it's still so quiet. I don't know if you guys noticed, but it was so quiet here that we heard the squeaking here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, how is the controls here, by the way? You have E, N, S. Yeah, so it's basically economy, normal sport, uh, different current control. So you, you just cap the current. So, so if people want to make sure they get uh, home, you know, you put it on economy and you limit the current and you go far further. Hmm. Erik, I want to ask you about um, uh, maintenance. Because in a fossil engine, there is actually lots of maintenance and stuff and service times. Yeah. Uh, how is, can you explain that stuff? Yeah, yeah so, so a fossil, you have a four stroke, uh, at least in Norway. Uh, there's a ban, I think it's in EU, on a ban on two stroke, uh, or at least the environmental change uh, requirements has changed a lot. So, so it's typically a four stroke and you have to change oil. Uh, a fossil engine sits up here, as we talked about, the gears going down. You need to cool the engine, so you have to bring seawater up. And you do that with an impeller, which is a propeller basically that, that drives the seawater up. That needs to be changed. Uh, if you lose that, you will lose cooling and you will uh, destroy your engine. Um, so you have to change the impeller, you have to change the uh, uh, transmission uh, seals and stuff. Uh, typically, uh, you know, they say 1500 hours runtime or once in a year. So what we have here is a naturally cooled motor. Uh, it sits under the water and in Norway it's 22 degrees or something in the water now. Uh, it's cooled sufficiently just by being in the water. Uh, the controller is air cooled and that's sufficient. So very effective and um, as such you don't need any maintenance. So for example this one is a prototype. 
this. It's kind of out. It, it's, it will be like this. In, it is in production now, so it, I just got an early one, but uh, it will look basically like this, yeah. And so how, do you know how many hours you have run this motor at? I, I did a long range test uh, last weekend. Uh, yeah, you can maybe post a link to that on, on, on the YouTube. Uh, I did 150 nautical miles. Uh, I was running for run time for that test was 50 hours. So typically a year's use for a you know average uh, fossil output. Um, of course, no, no issues. Um, but uh, I think this one has had three, four hundred hours just in this boat. Uh, okay. but, but obviously in development we have tested thousands of hours. So here we have an app, but this app is from the the motor uh, manufacturer, EC Outboard, and then we see the uh, we see voltage and uh, a current, but we don't see kilowatt. But you can just do a quick math here. So we're running at um, how much is this? Five hundred, uh, three hundred watts roughly. No, four four hundred watts roughly. Something like three hundred fifty watt. That's it. Six uh, seven hundred RPM. Huh. Wait, where was the speed, by the way? Four point... Okay, this is in kilometers per hour, right? Yeah. So we have, you only need uh, 300, 400 watts to, to cruise at uh, this kind of speed. Well, I'm, I'm quite uh, surprised. I'm quite surprised that we, we, we don't need much, that much power to just cruise. Very low power, and again, this is this formula. You know, the, the faster you go, the more power you need. Um, I also heard that uh, uh, you know the boat. Well, there are the, the two two types of uh, sailors. Right? We have the like okay, maybe not that one, but um, we, yeah, we saw some other boats earlier. But we have the we have the sailors people, and then the motorboat uh, speedboats people. The speedboats people, they just want to get from A to B fast. And then the sailors? And the sailors, they kind of say that uh, you're, actually, you're actually the place you want to be when you arrive at the boat. You're going out sailing and that's it. Yeah. But the motorboats, they want to go to a place. Always. So this is it, this is it. We just chill here. <laughs> and enjoy the silence. <laughs> but can we check now uh, the batteries maybe yeah. downstairs? Yeah. So here, in, I don't know what you call this, but inside the, the boat we have batteries and this is the three kilowatt hour battery yes so this is the, the, the three kilowatt um, hour um, so this is a movable battery 20 plus kilograms 25 uh, we have some handlebars here you have an integrated state of charge so you can see how much power you have uh, in addition to the app we have two connectors uh, and this is quite uh, nice so this uh, setup is modular so you can decide to take a cable like this and hook this battery together with another battery and you have a larger pack. So they're parallel connected. Um, and we have some communication ports and stuff that, that we, we, we need uh, ourselves. You can also turn the battery completely off uh, when you leave it so, so it doesn't discharge by using BMS or anything like that. So this is the three kilowatt. Uh, this is a nine kilowatt hour, sorry, kilowatt hour. And this is a nine kilowatt hour. And uh, you can maybe see when you um, film from the side here. Uh, I don't have the measurements completely in my head now, but uh, I think this is 46 centimeters deep, the, the three kilowatt hour. This one is roughly the double. So double size, triple energy content. Um, yeah, that's it basically. Very uh, pouch cells, NMC, uh, manufactured here in Europe. Uh, used in uh, automotive, aerospace, uh, high-end uh, applications. Uh, so we just pa passed by the Nesodden ferry now, um, which is electric, we can film that afterwards, but um, the, there's a lot of conversion of ferries in Norway to electric propulsions, and uh, this cell is qualified also for those kind of applications, so it's a very quality um, cell. But you don't have any active cooling here? No active cooling, and this is... Uh, okay in an application like this where you, you, you run maximum at a C and one and a half. Uh, but of course, if you want a high power application, you need to think about different cooling applications. Hmm. Cooling is basically, that is the limit of the power. And I see right now the, the, the nine kilowatt hour and the three kilowatt hour, they are not connected. Do you, so 
But yeah, so we're actually running it on the nine kilowatt hour right now. Right? I'm running it on the nine. I could hook up like this, uh, and then I would run it together as a twelve kilowatt hour pack. Mm, uh, yeah. So, but typically you buy a three, maybe two. You buy two, two, three, two, three, two, three kilowatt packs, and you cover them together. Um, or you could, I mean, you can have up to four. So you can have thirty six kilowatt hour actually if you, if you take four nine kilowatt hours. So the, that's a large, large pack. Hmm. Mm. And uh, but I noticed that these connectors are uh, orange ones, but they, it's not counted as high voltage here. Right? No, I think the the if I remember correctly from my automotive days, I think they are uh, the limit is seventy two. But uh, don't hold me against that. Um, they are they are from a connector manufacturer, high end connectors. Uh, IP this connector in itself is IP sixty nine. So when you close it uh, here and you hook it down, uh, like put it in, close it. It will um, be IP69, actually, that connector. The battery in itself is IP67. Um, yeah, it's important. Uh, one of the challenges we have uh, seen is uh, to find connectors which is durable and watertight and can take the current. So uh, this pack can actually deliver 240 amp, which is a lot the biggest pack. And this is uh, uh, not continuous, 180 continuous, I think. Um, and this is a 60, kilo, 60 amp continuous 90 peak so uh, you need beefy cables um, and uh, proper connectors this is the challenge with lower voltage yeah but also um, these battery packs uh, can they withstand water yes so so this is uh, ingress protection as a classification for uh, this two two numbers it's the first number and the second number dust and water uh, this is IP67, so it, it in theory could be submerged as long as you have connected it up. But uh, you know you, you shouldn't do that, of course. But uh, it will work in a marine environment. So if uh, you would have it, uh, let's say, on the deck instead, it will also work. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of our customers have uh, a ding dinghy, uh, and uh, when you know you have a dinghy with your bigger boat and you use. The electric motor with your dinghy, so you put the battery out in the dinghy, and that's a wet environment. Um, so, so that's important that it, it needs to withstand water. And then you had some uh, stuff here. This is just for debugging, I guess. This is just for uh, debugging, yeah. So, uh, or or monitoring. Uh, so this is a uh, you know every battery pack has a BMS, a DC DC converter, uh, and you know done quite professionally. And and here we can read, you can see there is 14 cells in series so it's three three strings on this nine kilowatt hour and we can see then the the voltage per cell here uh, and temperature and you know what's not currently we are drawing one amp out of the pack and i think we started at 98 percent state of charge and uh, we've been running for half an hour or something uh, at low current but uh, used to one and a half percent yeah so uh, here we have uh, what we call uh inverter this is a prototype um, but the final product will come this fall so this does a couple of things and it will do three things when, when we launch it it has uh, uh, two uh, 30 mains in so on this one just a shuko in um, so when we are connected to the mains to the main grid at land we can charge these batteries with 2400 watt so that means an hour and 15 minutes on the 3 kilowatt hour and 3 hours and 45 ish four hours on the nine kilowatt hour. Um, in addition to that, we uh, can, when we're not connected to the mains, uh, we can also draw AC 3000 watt continuous, I believe it is, um, out and, you know, make a cup of coffee here if you would like to. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, which is quite nice, you know, charge your uh, charge your phone, uh, charge your um, laptop, laptop and, you know, smaller auxiliary loads. We can del deliver a lot of power in peak. This, I think, this probably draws quite a bit when you when you turn it on, but it's a short time, right? Uh, you don't want to use your heater or anything like that because you will run out of juice. Um, there will also be a 12 volt uh, outlet here. Uh, a lot of boat kind of you know auxiliary things like the GPS plotter we have here runs on runs on 12 volts, so so you need 12 volt uh, in a boat. Mm. You see now uh, we don't have too much wind, but uh, at least. We are sailing at uh, 2.9 knots. And interestingly, if you look here, uh, we are not pulling any current or anything. 
but uh, it's still reported as 300 rpm which means that the motor is just spinning in the in the water here but we don't have enough we, we tested it we don't have high enough voltage to charge the battery but in principle you could if you have strong enough wind just let the motor regen so this is the principle is there we just need stronger regen and maybe you know the system has not been programmed for this but this could work in a sailboat at least but now let's see now so if you if you want to cruise a little bit faster okay well, we also see the speed here in kilometers per hour so this is also the if you then add if you want to go faster so now we are cruising at uh, 3.7 3.6 knots there roughly there almost four knots and you see that uh, we, the, the motor is not working that hard 57 volt times uh, so this is roughly 900 uh, watts only or roughly one kilowatt is needed to maintain that speed so it's, uh, it's funny this is almost like when I'm uh, when I'm driving a car and, and I have tailwind I'm using very little power so you can just cruise if you want to cruise a little bit faster without having to sail all the way then yeah really economical the way we drive over uh, the way we, we sail now because we're using little power the more power you push through the system here then of course the, the less efficient it becomes okay so we are heading back now and uh, we just took down the the sail this is called what is it front sail or something uh, but uh, I was quite surprised that actually when the sail is up this is not that big sail but um, we managed to harvest something uh, the power was something close to one kilowatt or maybe even more and it's not that windy today so think about this how much power we have in the wind versus if we have to how many solar panels do we have to lay down here to, to get one 1.5 kilowatt that's that would be huge we would have to cover the whole boat and it would be poking out but so now uh, you see that we are sailing against the wind uh, there on top of the uh, up there I don't know if you can see it there is actually an indicator an arrow pointing where the wind is oh okay so we are now head on against the wind and you can see the speed here is 3.2 3.4 knots yeah so we're cruising on somewhere between 3.5 and 4 knots which is decent speed to show here that we are actually progressing fairly fast for uh, just cruising and then the power needed this time is roughly one kilowatt okay it bugs a little bit it goes into some kind of sleep mode but we, we're pulling one kilowatt just to go back now oh, that's uh, that's hook by the way and then i think actually if you go further this direction there is a nude, nude uh, beach so but I, I guess i i will not zoom in there just show you that there that's a nude nude beach and this is the regular hook beach okay here's a ferry prinzen it's called prinzen the prince and this is electric ferry with uh, is it cars or just passengers uh, I don't think you can get cars on board so uh, cars it's just people it goes to Nesodlana which is uh, on the tip there so uh, and the other one there also right yeah Coming. yeah so they go all the, all the time and uh, they are uh, all electric Wow awesome actually most ferries now in Norway and we have a lot of them uh, are being converted to uh, electric drive well so we're back on the starting point now at land oh, uh, yeah but um, so we uh, how many percent did we start at uh, uh, 98 98 uh, percent and now we have 90.5 and that's it so <laughs> we spent just tiny bit of the this is the nine kilowatt hour battery so we could have gotten away with the the three kilowatt hour battery even which is cheaper yeah, yeah. and uh, i think we only used uh six just quick calculation six seven hundred watt hours or something uh so uh not a lot <coughs> <laughs> okay and then one last thing i'll ask you about is the price yeah so um you know the way i see it now today we actually use less than one kilowatt hour and we've been sailing a little bit around here we spend uh, over one hour hour and 25 minutes i think yeah um, 20 minutes uh so it means that uh, even the three kilowatt hour battery would be sufficient and the three kilowatt uh, motor that package yeah and then the price then is uh well how much is the price then with it 
So uh, it's uh, 35 for the motor and uh, 30 uh, knock for the uh, thousand for the uh, the battery. So 65,000 knock or 6,000 euro. And it's almost plug and play. It's plug and play. No, oh, it is plug and play. Uh, basically, you um, you mount it on your motor uh, on your boat, sorry, and hook in the connector, and uh, there you go. Charge it, everything includes. And uh, you you could even move it to another boat. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, that's the whole principle. Yeah. So but. Uh, so for 65k, no, that's roughly uh, 6,000 euros or, or 6,000 mm. dollars. It's not that big price because if you compare it to how much, uh, you see, that's actually that's like a fossil. Yeah. Yeah. If you can turn over there, and there just show it that one. You see how noisy that one is? You can actually hear it all the way here. We are just standing here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was a good example. Yeah. But um, so, how much would this boat cost new then? Yeah, so uh, a new uh, 20, 22 feet, this is 21 and a half feet. Uh, I haven't checked, but say 50,000 euro, I guess. So, for roughly one tenth of the price, you can electrify it yeah. and avoid that kind of noise and pollution. Oh, yeah, you know, when we were sailing, uh, if we would sail uh, with tailwind, then there would be emissions. Uh, going for us or in into us or yes yes so this is a problem when you sail with the tailwind you feel yeah, I mean you hear more noise also but you also feel all uh, smell the perfume from from the diesel mm. or, or petrol yeah the fumes rather rather yeah. perfume <laughs> <laughs> sorry did I say perfume <laughs> but I, I'm so surprised that they they moved far away you can still you you said they were noisy I thought oh can't be that noisy. Yeah. They are noisy. They are noisy. Yeah. They are kind of ruining the the whole atmosphere. Mm. When you were saying, they are very particular on, a, especially on a sailboat. You know, you really want the quiet. And uh, so, as I said, the running with a motor, uh, electric motor on a sailboat, is like sailing. Yeah. Huh. So wow. So um, this is uh, this is why I came here when I heard about the 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 the, the principle here. I was like. I need to check out this one because you know for a candela you have to be a millionaire kind of <laughs> but here anyone can buy this it's just the price of a second hand leaf and then you can electrify it and you can just bring it to other boats also so I really love it yes <laughs> thank you thank you so, for your time yeah and I hope more people will uh, look into this uh, you can just use it on any boat uh, so the, I guess the question is, do you also sell to other countries? Yeah, we kind of do. So uh, so just just go on our webpage and uh, contact us and we, we can send over. We, we export quite a bit of motors with uh, some of our partners, which uh, produce uh, uh, dinghies, so river boats and uh, sea packs. So uh, you can buy it from <laughs> us in Europe. Wow, awesome, awesome. I don't know about you guys think, but I found this very interesting and I just... If I had a boat, I would probably strongly consider this, but I'm a land crab. <laughs> Maybe in Thailand, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but okay, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.